welcome in Sonia Tidingo from NBCSN Bay Area Sports. And, uh, of course, the first thing we need to talk about is how have you been spending your time since everything has kind of shut down and obviously we've got the return of baseball. You're not just part of Twitter mission. There's a lot of other things going on. So, uh, how excited are you about the athletics right now? Um, so I'm not going to get too excited. I just take it like, as they say, just take it one game at a time. So, um, that's kind of how, uh, how I'm dealing with it. I don't want to celebrate, you know, and also they're, I think um, the Astros are only like two, two and a half games behind them. So, and they still have how many more games left? I think we're all, we're already halfway through. I, was say, I think we're right around the halfway mark. I think we're like through four, four and a half weeks ago, about five, five and a half to go. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we're close to 30, if not already there. Um, so like I said, it's like, you know, they got the Astros on their tail, so I don't want to get too excited. You know, if when they do good, that's great. Um, I so yeah. I, to answer your question, I am internally excited, but I will not externalize that. I feel you. And in Astros, that's a team that we can all hate. Get feet <laughs> after what happened. Yeah, nobody likes a cheater. Oh man, yeah. bang bang. Um, yeah. So, uh, see, now I'm a Giants fan, but I'm not an A's hater. Uh, I get, you know, that I, I spend a lot of time with uh, my buddies, whether we're playing softball or at our weekly football parties. We, we got someone there from just about everywhere. We got a Broncos fan, a couple Raiders fans, Steelers, blah, blah, blah. Now, do we razz each other? Absolutely. But yeah, it's like someone's going to, uh, you know, throw me a ticket to, hey, let's go see the Raiders. Well, obviously not anymore, but. Back in the day, you want to go see a Raiders game? Sure, absolutely. I'm there for the sport. Uh, if you, you know, you want to see an Oakland A's game? Absolutely. And in fact, I will say I went to an A's game. I want to say, I don't believe it was last season, but probably the previous season, uh, went to a game. And I will tell you, you know, everybody's going to dump on the Coliseum. And I get that because it's been around forever. But I will tell you, one of the nicest experiences ever, like the people taking your money at the parking lot were like the nicest, the people bringing you into the building were the nicest. I mean, just I was blown away by what a welcoming atmosphere it was. So yeah, it's kind of like a, the mom and pop shop of um, stadiums. You know, everything's a little bit more personal. Um, mm -hmm. I, they really did a good job, like you said, turning that place into – um, something that was welcoming and fun. I think uh, Championship Plaza was, that's probably my favorite addition to it. Because, um, you know, it's a great place for people to gather. They have food trucks. I love food trucks. So, um, yeah, just in the way they, they um, like they did the tree house. And then, yep. you know, you can go through, through um, on the other end, there's like, there's elephants, there's a kid's zone. They're, so they really, they're making the most with what they have. And, you know, that's, that's really Oakland, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I when thought the most it was a little. Yeah, well, I thought it was great and uh, very affordable. So yeah. I was, yeah, I was blown away. And I'm like, okay, I'm definitely, we're going to do this a few times a year without a doubt, you know, even if it's just to root against another team. <laughs> you know, it's, again, it's, I didn't grow up with the A's. I grew up more with the Giants, but you, you know, there are names that you just, you had to pay attention to, whether it was Ricky Henderson or Conseco or McGuire. There, there were some names that were huge in the Bay Area that were huge stories. So you definitely, you, you know, you, you hear about them. And I hear about it from the, the guys on my teams that are big A's fans. And we share share a little war stories. Oh, this guy's horrible. They need to do this with it. Oh my God. Did you see that game and this? And so I get it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a hater either. I don't hate the giants. I just, you know, like I said, Brody I hates the giants. Something. Brody is a hater. I mean, are we, are, are we going to edit this or is he going to hear that? <laughs> I, that I, if he listens, he listens. It's okay. He knows. He knows. <laughs> he knows I'm just messing with him too. I gotta, you know, I gotta, chirp him every once in a while so it's, absolutely it's part of my job i'm gonna you know what i'm now that i'm thinking about i'm gonna have to like uh send you like a san francisco or a tie with the giants logo on it just that you can roll it up and stuff it into his tie box 
and just one oh day <laughs> you pull it out and they're like <laughs> that would have been great except for that brody doesn't even go to the go into the studio anymore and well, yeah. once we get back to that kind of life we'll, right right yes when we're we back to normal that's a good one so uh you know people probably most from at least from a sharks fan perspective probably most familiar with you from twitter mission so of course we have to start off um does your dad dominate the chat too much uh, I guess that depends on who you ask. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't think he does, but, uh, you know, I'm so used to it that when he doesn't sign on, that's when I'm, you know, it rings a bell. I'm like, is something, is, is everything all right? Why didn't he show up? Why isn't he chirping me? He's my biggest troll, to be honest. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's better to have your dad be your biggest troll than somebody else. Yeah. Biggest fan, biggest troll, you know. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Yeah. Yeah. No, but he loves it. He, uh, he plays video games all the time. Uh, he's probably asked some of, some of the people in the chat if they wanted to play with him. Um, his screen name is Ty Dangles on Xbox. Um, that's T-Y Dangles. And um, actually, I think he was trying to set up something with Eric, trying to set up a, um, like a chell tournament. Nice. Yeah, so he just, he kind of, he just loves the atmosphere. Um, he, yeah, he plays with all my brother's friends. Uh, like, he, like, he needs people to play video games with. Like, I'm so glad I got brothers because I was like, oh, good, now I don't have to play video games with my dad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but did he get you out on the ice, though? He tried to. Um, so I always wanted to do something different, and he always tried to push me to do like, like play hockey. And it's not that I didn't want to play hockey. It's that I wanted to, you know, do the other sports that I was interested in. So that was my way of rebelling. It's like, I'm not going to do it. And then I did it like as a full grown or as an adult uh, <laughs> for, <laughs> for um, give hockey a try day. And I was like, man, this was really fun. I wish, I wish I had done it sooner, but you know, that's just how, how it played out and it happened for a reason. Um, yeah, so I played hockey all of one time on the ice. It was documented. Um, oh. Yeah, it was really fun. Uh, it made me, it gave me a, a whole new respect for, for every single hockey player on the ice. Like, I will never say, oh, that guy sucks, because I know I'm like, that's just hard. Like, yeah, he <laughs> might be not as good as everybody else, but who am I to talk, you know? Like, that's still a pro, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it gave me that perspective. Well, when did Twitter Mission start? That was, I want to say, like, three seasons ago? Yeah, I feel like it was three seasons ago. Um, Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, how do you think... Uh, I want to say kind of like just the social media impact of watching sports now at this point, because obviously when Twitter mission is available to sharks fans, it's like, Oh, this is kind of cool because we get to see all the stuff that goes on air, but then we don't have to stomach the commercials and we get to like, get you get, watch you guys kind of go off script and kind of razz each other a little bit. And then also have a little interaction with the fans that are, whether you're answering questions or showing images on the uh, screen in the new studio, which we should probably talk about in a hot minute, but how do you, how have you enjoyed that impact that it has that it's so kind of in the moment? You know, it's funny that you, uh, you really hit the nail on the head with that one because that's exactly why Twitter mission started so that we wouldn't lose you guys to commercials because you know, it's like commercial breaks are long. Um, so I mean, I, th I think it was, a, it was a great idea and, you know, it's been cool to like interact with, with the fan base and, um, you know, just be the conduit between them and, and, and the guys. And it's, it's really cool to see how excited they get, you know, when like Curtis answers their question or, you know, I read a comment and they're like, oh, you know, thanks for, thanks for telling him that, you know, it's, so it's, it's cool to see that. That makes me feel really good. Um, because, you know, those are, these are the guys that they looked up to and, and it's, it's like secondary to meeting them in person. You know, there's still kind of, there's still that interaction. Well, it's, it has been a lot of fun because uh, it is also kind of a little bit of a peek behind the scenes, but you know, and during a normal game day or whatnot, what 
you know, what does happen behind the scenes is, is like, there's obviously some say staged things that are set up on social media, but like, is Brownie just giving it to Brody nonstop? Is there a good back and forth or just, is Brody just the brunt of every joke? Uh, you know, Brody does bear the brunt a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, it's not really, um, I think a lot of people, sometimes they, they take it seriously and they're like, wow, these guys don't like each other, but it's not like that. Like they don't actually not like each other. Not to my knowledge, you know, um, <laughs> they're pros, you know what I mean? Um, I think definitely Curtis is the bigger, uh, prankster than Brody. Um, so, so that's entertaining. Um, yeah, there was a time, probably some of you guys saw this, but, uh, like Curtis tied Brody up to a chair, like with, uh, so he'll do stuff like that. I think, um, actually, I think Sharky even came in one time and he like took all of Brody's ties and just dumped them all out on the oh. floor. Yeah. I saw that on, I think, uh, Sharky put that on social media. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, everybody wants to, um, take a hit and I try not to, but sometimes, you know, he just leaves it there and I'm like, I, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's going over the fence. Here we go. Yeah, it's like, don't set me up like that because I can't resist. So, um, like, the other day, but he had, this happened a few years ago also, but it just came up again. He wore this shirt um, on air for A's, and uh, I was on the – we all have a conference call during while the, the show is going on. And um, I was, like, asking everyone, I was like, hey, have you guys seen that show, Blue's Clues? And uh, they, were, they were like um, – well, they're too old, my, my boss and all that. And they're like, oh, I don't know what that is. So I showed them a picture. But if you've seen Blue's Clues, you know what Steve wears. And Brody owns a shirt that's just like that. So some of the other, uh, my other coworkers put that on Twitter. But yeah, Brody, he's such a good sport, though. I think we're really lucky to have him to pick on because he doesn't take it personally. Um, you know, he's, he's fun about it. So um yeah, Brody and Curtis, they they might, you know, a little, but it, they save that stuff for air. Well, and it's I, some of my favorites, of course, is when, you, uh, when you're live at the tank and Sharky will get involved, whether it's Silly String or the, the toilet paper on the leaf blower or just there was one time where Sharky literally had like a fist on a stick and he like reached behind you and Curtis just to punch Brody, stuff like that. Uh, that he even dumped a bottle of water on his head. I think, <laughs> yeah, because Brody was like, "My hair, my hair." <laughs> See, that's that. I always wonder. Like, I like seeing Sharky and Brody go back and forth. I'd like to see that more, a little more on social media. We need to take more advantage of that. Yeah, say. yeah, we 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 do. I mean, there's been times where. Um, we've been on air and we didn't know it because we thought, oh, we're not connected yet, you know? So those moments might slip out. So you, you may get that when it returns. <laughs> well, I will say one of my favorite zingers from you was uh, we, we, I don't know if you remember this, um, Hannon was subbing in for, for Brownie and it was during, I guess, mid to late November because the stashes were going. And it uh, looked like Brody had probably just gotten a haircut or something. And Hannon at this point is a little follically challenged, but they're, they're up there with the stashes and, and kind of got the heavy jackets on looking a little beefy. And I just sent in and I said something along the lines of, and now we know what it would look like if our local firemen hosted sharks pre and post or whatever. And they took it as a compliment. They said, you know, Hey, I think that's a compliment, you know, it's cool to, be, you know, be firemen or whatever. And I think your line was something along the lines of, yeah, Brody might be able to like hold the hose oh. <laughs> <laughs> or like turn the water off and on. Maybe that's how I think what I said could that. Do. Yeah. I was like, I kind of remember the feeling of where this was going. I just didn't remember what I said, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I said he's the water boy. Yeah. So uh, he could turn that off and on. He'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> see, like, again, like if you, I mean, he didn't really set me up, but it's like, I can't resist. It's like, I don't even think about it first. It just comes out. And sometimes I remember I said something one time that I think he might've just towed the line of like, 
did I offend him or not? But um, that was that was when I started thinking. I was like, okay, now I need to think before I, I say these things because he kind of looks like like what the hell. <laughs> so it was about it was something about um, he was mad. Oh, he was mad that he had to wear he had to wear something. It might have been those my team's jackets. I don't remember what it was. Oh my god. Yeah, Oof. it was something. He was mad that he had to wear something, and he was like, I just hate having to wear um this ugly jacket and i said but what about the shirt that you walked into work with <laughs> and, he, and that's the one where he kind of he, i felt like he was a little offended by that so sorry brody i was really just kidding i just couldn't help myself <laughs> that's a solid line i know but those yeah those yellow oh dear lord and i remember uh well i should say if i remember correctly it was kind of like there were options it was like brownie and brody got stuck with the jackets I think Randy and either Hetty or Baker got stuck with the ties. And then there was like one other featured item. And it was kind of like, it, it felt like Brody and Brownie drew the short end of the stick on that one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Those things were very unsightly. So uh, it's totally understandable. Um, it, I mean, but it looked, you know what? I probably shouldn't say much about the jacket, though. So <laughs> I'm just not going to say anything. Well, it's not like they paid their own money for that. They were giving it to them. <laughs> well, right, right. I just don't want to. Um, I mean, we, we know what it looks like. So I think we're all on the same page. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it was pretty comical. So uh, one thing, of course, uh, when, when we uh, mentioned to a couple people that we would be speaking with you, one of the burning questions, of course, was, has Sonia ever tried Brownie's French press coffee? Because we always heard about the French press for so long that it was supposed to be amazing. And it looks like Brownie likes drinking mud, but I mean. Uh, I have never tried it because I'm not a coffee drinker. Um, so he's never offered it to me and I've never asked. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I do... He is always sniffing his cup, like, oh, this is so great, you know. Um, I don't know anybody else who's tried it, so I, I can't, you know, vet for that. But, uh, I mean, maybe Brody drinks it, but uh, that might not be saying a lot, you know. But, uh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We, but then again, we all saw the, the smelling salts incidents. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That, that was so funny. I actually, I was scared. I was like, oh, is he going to get a bloody nose on air? Because he looked like he was like, it burns. And yeah, I'm surprised his like no vessels popped in his eyes. So he got lucky. Yeah. yeah. I was like, he, he might not make it through this. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know gonna... what? He's cut, he, he wanted to do it again. So apparently it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Well, it always made me when he kind of like did like a second version of it later where he's just, whoa, and, and acting like he's on the bench and everything. And I'm going, I bet you it's like taped up or something. Like it's slightly <laughs> covered. <laughs> or he's like holding his breath. Like when he's like pretending to smell it. I don't know. Yeah. He's, he's crazy for that, but they like it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, so what goes like into a typical game day broadcast for you and, and everybody in the Sharks? Like, I mean, you know, from start to finish, what is kind of in behind that? Because we see you on Twitter that you'll throw out perhaps uh, some sort of a topic, uh, you know, send in, you know, whatever it might be. Um, is that just you like on the way in going, wonder what I can tweet out today? Or is like, is that like an actual like, okay, we need to meet. <laughs> um so we didn't really like now um when we do our shows obviously not sharks but now like when we're doing a's we have like meetings earlier in the day um before we come into work but we weren't doing that at the time um for sharks so for me that was something where like i'm on bart and i'm like okay what can you know what can i ask them because you know again we were talking about um the big screen in our new studio I really wanted to take advantage of that. You know, it's right behind me and um, it looks really cool. So that was me trying to figure out what can I put on the screen um, during Twitter mission. So yeah, I would like try to think of questions, you know, like what could we, what could I have them respond with? Um, the best ones are, you know, when they get to share their stories about like meeting players and, and you know, the, those types of things, but um, yeah, those were probably, those were the most fun for me. Just, just those whole, um, that whole segment. Uh, I think you guys sent in some like Photoshopped, 
um, pictures. I think we did like a Star Wars. Oh yeah, put Brody as the emperor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's he Eric. He, yeah, he's the he's the king of our Photoshop stuff. But yeah, there was that. But uh, and then you featured myself along with a few other people for our sh you uh, Shark Shed, if you will. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. It was cool. See, it's so it's 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 kind of bringing the fans into our studio, um, like doing stuff like that, like seeing. Uh, like Zach man, we saw, I think almost every angle of his house. So we kind of <laughs> have like this 3d view of it, but, um, but you know, it, it's, it's, like I said, like it's the closest we're going to get to, um, interacting with them. So that's what made it fun. Um, but yeah, in a typical day, so that like, that's just a small part, like coming up with that stuff and then, you know, sifting through the tweets and, um, but then there's, uh, the rundown. Uh, that's where we have like our scheduled blocks of like content of what's going to go on the air. So um, for me, I put the, like, I, I don't physically put the graphics on. That's another, that's like the Chiron operator, but um, I fill out the graphics and I, uh, so it's like researching stats and like, um, I, so I don't design them. I'm trying to make it because when I explain this to people, they think that I actually like draw it out and like, I'm the <laughs> designer of it. It's like, no, I'm like, typing into these fields, these text fields. No. Um, so I'm mostly responsible for that. Um, but game days, yeah, game days go fast, uh, especially since we started doing Twitter mission um, for all of us, like it, it's just nonstop. It's like going through the rundown and then doing Twitter mission and then, you know, going through the rundown again. I actually don't really get to, um, to watch the game that much because I'm like actually just looking at the computer, like filling out the rundown, going through tweets, so um, I really depend on like Randy's voice to uh, know when I need to look up or hearing the reactions of um, other people in the newsroom. So like I'll watch on the TV delay on purpose so that if I hear a reaction, I can look up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, game days are fast. Like honestly, I'm pretty sure all of us don't eat that entire like eight hours yeah you know get a little a little nibble in between like a commercial or something during the second period <laughs> oh no that yeah once once pregame starts it's like we are locked in and we don't get to eat probably till we get home um so we there might have been some times where where you guys have witnessed some hangriness i don't know maybe <laughs> i want to uh just once whether it's uh brody's birthday or whatever the occasion is I would love to see just once somebody kind of messes with the Chiron a little bit. <laughs> I, I want to say, have we not done that yet? I don't know. I don't know that you have. And, and I'm assuming that there's a preview monitor somewhere close to the, to the desk. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, we haven't. Okay. So actually, no, we haven't um, like typed in any like graphics to mess with him, but we like, I remember one time I was doing, um, it was like, like hockey card day or something it was uh and we photoshopped brody's <laughs> head uh, i forgot who it was but he had a mullet um yeah and he brody didn't know about that like sometimes we'll hide stuff like underneath the rundown um so he won't see it and then we'll <laughs> insert it into the show so we've got him like that a couple times oh man that's glorious well yeah uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, th this has been fun, a nice little sneak peek, uh, kind of behind the scenes of what happens to the, with the game day broadcasts. Uh, I, obviously your Oakland athletics are, are trajectorying. That's not a word, but they're, they're on the right path. They're ascending. Uh, there you go. The, my giants, not so much. This is, uh, it's, it's, I'm not going to lie. It's not good. <laughs> well, you know what though, with a 60 game season, if there was any year, you know, for your team not to be in the running, I mean, this one could be it. I mean, this is almost kind of like an asterisk season, not Houston asterisks, but um, yeah. <laughs> See, and it's funny you bring that up because in regards to hockey, there's been a lot of back and forth is whoever wins the cup this season does it deserve an asterisk? Now, I'm one of the people that's kind of go, no, I don't think that it does because, I mean, you're obviously going to have some sort of footnote that's, that 
says what happened in the you know down the road and when they write in the history books about this but it's like they still got through 70 games out of 82 that's pretty significant it's not like they played 30 and said okay boys playoffs are here you know like they played a significant amount of the season and if anything i think this it actually might be a little harder to win this season and it's already the hardest trophy in sports to win yeah i mean i was thinking that you know this obviously isn't the season that we wanted for the sharks but again if th there was a season to be this um this bad yeah um, <laughs> that uh you know this is it and and for them to not be in it you know obviously we want them to play but because they're not playing you know that could that could really save their life or like their families or whatever so you know this is just a weird time and uh i mean i'm, I'm i don't for me as a fan like the cup isn't on my mind obviously i mean they're not in it but there's just so many things going on well again like you said if if there was a season to not make it, this unfortunately would be the one, but hopefully because of it, you know, maybe you get a 1000% healthy hurdle and Eric Carlson and, and these guys that have kind of fought some injury bugs over the last couple of seasons. So hopefully it's enough for them to uh, just get back and be ready to go. Look forward to it, whether it's December 1st, as has been speculated, I don't know how many times, but what, you know, it, it, going to happen when it happens right right yeah hopefully this is a good time for them to rest and recover because you know they don't really get a lot of that it's just non-stop so you know um yeah best of luck next season <laughs> whenever that may be yeah <laughs> well thank you again for joining us we really appreciate it thanks for having me this was fun